Temtem Swarm is the Swarm game slash Bullet Heaven slash Vampire Survivors like slash these genres are getting really confusing. That's just similar enough to Pokemon to make Nintendo's lawyers really, really mad, but not similar enough that they can take action. Although after making this video, I'm going to have to check the bushes because there might be a couple hiding there. Now with recent Steam Next, a demo came out. So I decided to jump in, share some of my first impressions, then go over the content available so far before wrapping everything up with a verdict. So sit back, relax, hide that Nurse Joy pinup that you definitely have, and let's get into things starting with my first impressions. All right, so I'm a little duck thing and he's very bad at sending out waves. Oh, there we go, we hit something. I think I just need to walk in circles. This is an OP strat. Oh, I leveled up. Let's see, key field. An area that extends around the Temtem and deals constant damage. I like that idea. Increases the damage of water type techniques by 10%. I mean, if I could hit stuff, sure. Or a harmful projectile. All right, it's either going to be key field or water blade. You know, what? I'm going to go water blade. I miss with one projectile. Let's see if I miss with two. Well, oh. you have a circle strat. Super OP. Health, a claw, or damage. I should go health, but I'm going to go damage. I like the music. Increases the duration of techniques, so that's something I don't really have. I think. I'm not sure if I have techniques. Either way, more damage. We hit that guy for 39. Which seems like a lot. Okay. Pick up all the little EXP cubes. Nope. <laughs> Run away. Circle strat. Circle strat save me. All right. Increases attack area. Increases temtem speed. Or an ink blast with poisons. I have to say, I think my damage output's fine right now. But more AoE on the spells could be good. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Now we group some enemies and bonk them. Wait, what's that? What's that? A star. Spend Pansons to enhance your Tem and unlock their skill tree. Okay. So I evolve. And yes. Screen wide AoE. Hit everything. All right. I think I get four passives on the left and four. Four skills on the right, so I have to be a little bit careful. Um, so one lowers the cooldown, the other lowers the cooldown and does... Okay, yeah, we're going to go with that because it's more bonuses. More bonuses, better. Oh, complete. Oh, there's an event over here. Oh, let's not walk into the enemy. Wait, there's a whole map? I've just been walking in a circle and there's a whole map? Oh god, I did it so wrong earlier. Oh no. Also, the water blade, way more effective when you just run at enemies. It hits everything in front of you. Oh, I should have done that more. Oh no, I was so bad earlier. Oh no, ow. I'm sorry, little enemy. I just wanted to bonk you. I didn't want to run into you. Well, well, as usual, uh, just going to do a circle. There we go. There we go. Bonk a few more things. I won't get much EXP for that unless I go back, though. But also... Ow. Ow. Okay. Ow. Those hurt. Um, more Water Blade. And I like that. It's not just, hey, the cooldown's lower. It added other useful stats like AoE. Okay, cool. Oh, ow. Okay. This event is so far away. <laughs> oh, here we go. Wait, can I go in the water? I totally can. Yeah, that makes sense. Stay in the area to activate the event. I'm slightly worried. Wait, do I just collect cherries? Oh, it healed! That's OP! Ow. All right, so the little things on the ground turn into enemies. Okay. Oh, break the nest. Okay. Big boom. Uh, 
Increase armor, yeah. And technique. Okay, and I broke it. And I think that gold thing is a boss. It's a boss or a shiny? Fruit definitely heals. That's cool. And there's another event. I can evolve into Platox. Yes, I will evolve into Platox. Cool. I really like what they're doing with this. All right, so now we run to the next event and then we double back and take all the damage to try to get the little bit last bit of EXP that we left behind. Ow. Actually, those don't hurt nearly as much anymore. Okay. Hmm. This is a slight issue. Yep. Slight issue, but maybe I'll get something cool from that. Boss is still chasing me. I needed to use a circle strat more. All right. Defeat the spawned Temtem to receive an experience boost. I'd assume it's that big golden one. Oh. Cool. So I'm going to run here. Oh, it wasn't the big golden one. It was others. Okay. Cool. And now out. Collect some of my stuff. HP recovery, Panson's scratch. Eh, I don't think I need scratch. Is the purple crystal more EXP? I bet it is. Oh yeah, that's so much more. Nice. Ink blast that poisons enemies. You know what? Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, it's like a laser. Oh, that laser's so good. Okay, I got a level up and I got more EXP. So all I have to do is max out Ink Blast now. Wait, is that the real boss? Oh, I think that is the real boss. Oh, things just got serious. Oh, things got so serious. He has mechanics. Oh no. Oh no, he has mechanics. And I am bad at them. Give him the old ink blast. The old 1-2 ink blast. Okay. Circles I can deal with. Uh, oh yeah. Totally level that up. Okay. Do this. Fruit. Yes. Healing. Yeah, we gun buddy. Ow. Ow. Woof. Okay. Circles. Oh. Run away. Nope. I don't like that that has such a wide radius. Because the radius on the actual attack is so much wider. Oh, there's more fruit. Yes, eat the fruit. Heal up. And try to get some EXP to damage the boss. Okay. He's actually kind of low. So I think we can do this. We just have to play well for a little bit longer. Oh, get stuck on terrain. Yes. Yes. The poison worked. Oh, the poison worked. Oh, the poison was such a good choice. And this is such a bad, greedy move, but I don't care. Oh, that was actually really fun for the first boss in the game. Oh, that was way too fun for the first boss. Okay, maxed it out. And now... Oh, so much EXP to collect. Okay. Okay. Food over here. Let's go and get some. Wait, I'm sorry. Who are you? Excuse me. I think new enemies are spawning. I also think they are a little bit tougher. Okay. Golden. So I'm assuming golden means something. Oh, ow. Ow. Why did I walk into it twice? Ow, why did I walk into that again? 
Oh no. Okay. Okay. The music is surprisingly happy for how much I am dying here. Be food. Okay. Ooh. About to level up. It was not food. Ow. Ooh. Okay. Uh, increases the number of enemies projectiles pierce. Epic gear. Okay. Oh, and because I can only hold four, I get to swap something. So I could either give up my healing, my armor, my attack area. Yeah, I'll give up attack area. I see. So as you go through a run, you're replacing your stuff. That's cool. This feels very dynamic. Whoa. 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 The fact that you can just do the little laser spin and knock enemies back is awesome. Like, look at that. It's so good. So good. All right, so the golden ones drop extra stars, which are the evolution points. Cool. Well, I should probably stop just walking in circles and look for some objectives. But I don't know if there's any objectives active anymore. Keyfield. Yeah, this is this is where we get Keyfield. It probably won't help that much anymore, but I'll try to level it up. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, see, before the ult was a screen wipe, and now it took out all the small enemies. There's plenty of big enemies left. That's scary. All right. Oh, I can upgrade drill. Yeah, let's do it. Golden drill. Let's go. And now... Spin, spin, spin. Ow. Okay. I do have to be careful to not take a ton of damage while spinning. That poison's brutal, though. It's killing so many enemies. Definitely level up Keyfield. Keyfield needs to do more damage. Ooh, didn't quite knock it back in time. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no, it's another boss. Ow. I think this is where I die. Because I don't feel ready for another boss. But we'll see. Ow. Ooh. I mean, I do good damage to him. It's just that I'm... Ooh, that's such a big circle. Ooh. That was a huge boss AoE. Wipe the screen. Kill all the small enemies. Okay, there's food over there, but how do I get there? Oh, oh, am I gonna... Oh, yes. Food. Food. Maybe I can do this after all. Don't give me false hope, game. Don't give me false hope. Okay, the AoE move. Like, it's scary. But it's not that bad. The charge is honestly worse. And I like that you can tell he's an electric type because he does lightning AoE. Uh, he failed again. Oh. Oh. Ow. Nope. Oh, God, that's so much damage. That is so much damage. Oh, no. Oh, good, he did fist circles. Yes, do more fist circles. Oh, no. The little enemies. I wasn't paying attention to them. And they're coming back to get me. And I'm caught on the tree. Oh, this is very bad. Run away, run away, run away. 
No, this is totally... Wait, maybe? There's no way, right? Nope. Ah! The last stand failed. I have to say, that was a pretty neat first run. After the first run, I ended up playing for about four more hours. And here are my thoughts on the game so far. My next runs were on Platypet. Very similar build, but I was using all the knowledge I'd accumulated from the first run to be much more aggressive run to events, kind of stockpile fruit for bosses, and kill as many things as possible early on so that I could get a lot of EXP. And you know what? It worked. Not only did the run go much more smoothly, I felt way stronger, but I was able to make it to the final boss. I describe it as a much more challenging fight than the bosses I had faced previously. In fact, it had much more distinct mechanics and was a bit harder to find time to DPS the boss. But hey, when you have an AoE knockback laser that you can use to no scope 360 stuff, as it turns out, it's a pretty darn doable challenge indeed. So through that, I was able to win my first run, which got me a lot of unlocks and some eggs that I could then take into the game, complete an event and use to hatch other Thames. And as a note, yes, I'm going to be calling these Thames throughout the video. I found out the correct name is Temtem. I found this out after scripting the video. So you know what? It's staying in. So far, I'd say the demo was really fun. And if you're watching this either during Steam Next or while it's still up afterwards, don't know how long it's going to stick around for, then I do highly recommend you check it out. But there were two things that stood out to me as points of frustration. The first is the character balance. Platypet felt very OP, mostly because of a poison skill that allowed you to spit out ink in a continuous beam, knock enemies back, and do 360 no scopes to hit everything around you just felt super OP. It was the perfect mix of direct controlled damage, something that I felt was lacking from a lot of the other characters and skills, and also hitting very, very hard. So in terms of feedback from the devs, I'd say make more skills like that. And if you're checking out the demo as part of Steam Next, maybe you're watching this video as it airs, then I highly recommend that you also play Platypet. The other thing I ran into, which was really, really frustrating, is the bosses have red circle telegraphs. I know, I know, they're in games everywhere these days, and they're quite often overused. The problem here is, while some of the red circle telegraphs were very accurate, others were not, especially for the boss charge attacks. They took them as a light suggestion, which is very problematic because you think, all right, I'm out of a red telegraph, I'm safe. Nope, that boss just smacks right into you, runs you over, and you did nothing to avoid it. Which brought quite a few of my runs to an end, and it always felt extra frustrating because I felt like I was cheated. I deserved to do better that run, and the game just didn't tell me, hey, actually, I'm going to lie to you. Hold up and don't trust me for the next, like, five, six seconds until that red line goes away. With that said, I still quite enjoyed my time with Temtem Swarm. And for me, the high point was absolutely the Thames themselves, because each one felt really, really different. So first up, Platypet. This is a water slash poison type with three evolutions. And just having three evolutions makes it super OP because you get a ton of base stats, which I think is why a lot of my runs on Platypet felt way easier, especially when combined with a poison skill that I already highlighted earlier. Water types are a mix of randomly targeted and forward firing skills, which also means it's very easy to control your damage. And then its ultimate is unleashing a screen-wide AoE tsunami. Early on, this is going to one-shot everything, but later it doesn't quite hit that hard. Though, if you go into the skills, you can juice that damage up later. My favorite thing about Platypet was the way I could play quite aggressively without having to worry about the fact that I'd be punished for my bad decisions. Since if I had the poison skill, all I had to do is spin in a quick circle and I'd knock everything around me back. I found this to be a far more effective defense than using the actual shield skill. Yes, it will protect you from anything in front of you, and you can use it to just bowl over enemies and knock them down, but ultimately I found the best defense was an unstoppable offense. So I grabbed the single target skills like Claw, the Poison Beam, and some AoE skills. This is also the first character where I unlocked a synergy skill, that being Water Blade Plus. Normally, Water Blade simply fires ahead of you. Cool enough, and honestly, pretty darn effective. But Water Blade Plus fires four blades in a cross shape, meaning you have a lot more AoE, even if it's not quite as easy to use it for a single target. You activate each synergy skill by getting the correct combination of a skill and an item, meaning your builds are in some ways predefined, at least if you want to use the synergies. That said, I think this concept is pretty cool, and it honestly didn't feel like Waterblade Plus as powerful as it was 
was always a straight upgrade, since again, it felt harder to aim than the default Water Blade, meaning I could see Water Blade being a single target version and Water Blade Plus being the AoE version. In short, Platypet's awesome, Platypet's OP, and always pick a Water Starter. Now the next character I unlocked was Ori, the Tech Tem. This character starts with a single target skill that targets the nearest enemy. And from the beginning, I struggled hard, because this character doesn't have as many AoE options. I bricked my first run pretty quick as a result, I just couldn't keep up on the damage. But then I tried a couple more times, and I even ended up getting an AoE skill where a pillar comes down and it deals damage in a pretty generous area. But it still felt like, with that one skill trying to carry all of my AoE, I ended up bricking more runs than I succeeded. Now, maybe I'm just bad at Ori, that is entirely possible, but maybe this character is underpowered or more reliant on investment via skills. There's certainly a lot of cool concepts here. For example, you get a dash by default, and after you start using the dash, you unlock the ability to unlock a dash on all your other characters. And second of all, your ultimate ability is a random barrage of bombs along with a speed boost, which is pretty cool, and it does good on clear, but it was a little bit frustrating that I couldn't consistently hit bosses with it, since the barrage fires randomly and the bosses like to move around a lot. In fact, not being able to hit bosses or specific enemies was, in general, my main complaint when playing Ori. The third tem I tried was Iniki, the Lightning Tem, who again starts with a single target skill that zaps nearby enemies. Lightning's pretty interesting though, because Lightning has increased critical strike chance, meaning it is able to do prodigious amounts of single target damage. And there's plenty of Lightning skills even if all of them do fire randomly. This was very much one of the Thames where I wish I had more control over my skills, at least having one that you can manually aim yourself or fire forward would feel really, really good. But I did have a lot of AoE damage, which I could generally use to devastate anything that attempted to challenge me. Now, Iniki's ultimate reminded me a lot of Ori's, except instead of being a barrage of explosives, it's now a lightning storm that comes down and I believe shocks enemies, it probably has a crit bonus. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really read the skill very much. And again, while it was pretty solid, it didn't feel as good as Platypets, because Platypets Tsunami echoes outwards starting from your location. It knocks everything back, and it does massive damage to every enemy on the screen. This means if you're ever in trouble, it's a get out of jail free button. Whereas on both Ori and Iniki, while it does do damage, it doesn't get you out of sticky situations nearly as reliably. Sometimes the bolts will decimate stuff and leave you a path to escape. And sometimes they won't, and that just felt a little bit bad. So again, if anything, I came away from this character thinking that it was cool, I like the lightning theme very much, and I'm certainly going to try it more in the future, but I'd like a little more control. Which is exactly where Pidgepick or Pigapick, the Wind Tem comes in. Your basic attack is a Wind Blade that shoots forwards. This is good, it provides manual control, and it's easy to aim. Also, this Tem felt quite a bit tankier, so even without an evolution, I wasn't struggling nearly as much as the wave stacked up. And the LT is Invulnerability. Yes, an ult that's really fun. I could use it to get out of tight situations. I could use it to dive into enemies to deal damage to them with proximity. This is the sort of thing that I want to see because it rewards aggression. It feels totally different from the other Thames, and I found it to be highly successful. On both Platypet and Pidgepick, I was able to consistently win runs, something that I couldn't replicate on the other two Thames. And Pidgepick's win skills also have some pretty neat properties such as Boomerang, which does, well, exactly what you'd think from the name Boomerang. This offers a unique clear pattern, and I found it was actually pretty darn good at hitting enemies as I was kiting away from them, something that is quite a rarity. Most of the skills tend to be forward firing or random firing, meaning if you're running directly away from enemies, you're a lot less likely to damage them. But remember, with the Invulnerability Shield, on this character, you are also able to charge directly towards enemies and even stand directly next to bosses. Just remember to grab the dash and then dash out before the duration of your invulnerability expires. Something else that Temtem Swarm does really, really well are events on the map. As you run around, there's plenty of crates you can break. These contain pickups. Some of them freeze enemies, poison enemies, set enemies on fire. Some of them collect various resources, either the EXP cubes that you use to level up your Tems or the little stars that you use as a currency for the game's meta progression system. These are called Pansen. But at fixed times, you also get events. This could be something like Kill the Nest, where you have to kill a fixed target and you have a short amount of time to do that. Again, if you're playing a character that doesn't have many single target or controlled damage options, this can be a little bit frustrating. 
but if you're playing a character that does allow for that control, it feels really cool. Or maybe there's Pants and Feast, where a large circle appears and any tem that you kill within that radius immediately turns into a nice shiny gold star, which of course you want to collect and use towards your meta progression in the skills. But some of these events are certainly harder than others, such as the Stay in the Circle or Protect the Egg. Protecting the egg is very worth it because that's how you hatch your new temps, which very much harkens back to this game's creature collecting roots. Stay in the circle is, well, simple enough. You have to just stay in the circle for the allotted time, except for the fact that enemies are trickling in and they want to be in the circle too. This is where it can be really game-breaking, or I should say really advantageous, if you have the right ultimate or if you have the right power-up. After all, frozen enemies aren't exactly going to be encroaching on your personal space anytime soon. But speaking of collecting Panson, the meta progression currency, let's look at some of the game's meta progression systems, those being kudos, kind of like achievements, and skills where you spend Panson to power up your temps. Kudos you can kind of think of as achievements. So you do certain things, and you get certain unlocks. Use dash 20 times in a match? Well, there you go. New skill, dash damage. Or maybe it's locked in coming soon. Yeah, this is a demo, so there's a lot that I don't have access to, and I can't really tell you exactly what it's going to do. But also, when you interact with something that tells you about the kudo, such as this, you don't necessarily get it immediately. I have to defeat Nestle in less than a minute to unlock it, but because I've defeated Nestle, I know the kudo exists. And that way, you can do quite a lot to actually plan out and hopefully target some of these specific things. So for example, Platypet, the tem that I've played the most. You can get new items, you can get new effects. If you get level 10, there you go, 500 Pansons. Nice one-time bonus. On the other hand, if you reach level 25, you get a new gear called Toxins, which increases your poison damage, making some builds more effective. Deal 100,000 damage, you unlock a new skill, which you can then invest Pansons in, which increases your tsunami damage. But I don't have everything yet. Uh, for example, if I use tsunami 100 times in total, I get to invest in a knockback as well. This way you have something to progress, but it doesn't feel quite as crushing as some of the other meta progression systems in different games. Though because there's a lot of characters, it doesn't need to be super crushing to also mean you're not going to progress it very quickly. And that's where skills come in because skills are the other meta progression system, which in my experience more closely matches what you see in other titles. You unlock the skills via the kudos, and then you spend pansons to invest in them. So on Platypet, my most played character, I have plus one proj. This is super OP and you kind of have to beeline it on every character, which makes me a little sad because it feels like a mandatory viability threshold. Then in addition to that, there's some things that I don't have unlocked. I need to discover the kudo, then I'll be able to unlock the upgrade. As you invest Pansons, you get access to new things. So right now, I don't have any option here. I can't put points into range damage. But if I put some points here into damage, now range damage is unlocked. Similarly, sometimes you need to put things into multiple different skills before you can unlock them. Pickup range is locked, even though I have the Panson multiplier, because I haven't gone up through luck to whatever's here. I don't have a kudo for it, so I don't actually know. This way, your skill web is going to take a little bit of time to unlock. It's not simply a matter of just automatically filling everything out, though I do suspect, especially for a character you plan to main, you're going to fill everything out eventually. This does result in quite a lot of additional power. Sure, it's 10 damage here. It's plus one pierce there. It's 40%. Okay, 40% is pretty darn big. As these bonuses stack up, you're going to feel significantly stronger. But this also means some of the later levels might not feel very good until you get the bonuses. It's both the upside and the downside of meta progression systems. Now, as far as meta progression systems go, this one's pretty standard. I do kind of like the tiered upgrade system and unlocking it via kudos, though I do wish that certain core mechanics like plus one projectile and plus one dash weren't locked behind upgrades because it kind of feels like those are just going to be required, meaning you have to invest about 5,000 Pansons before a character really feels playable. With a lot of the rest of the bonuses, especially the smaller ones, like a little bit of crit and a little bit of crit damage, they feel like nice extras rather than something you have to unlock to be able to play the character. That said, this is still a demo. It could very well change in the future. 
But what about character diversity? And no, I don't mean the kind that weirders go on about on Twitter. After doing a quick Google check, I learned that there are 164 Thames available in Temtem, which means there's a huge range of enemy variety, playable characters, and boss designs that are all available to use. And honestly, that's pretty cool. Another thing that I find with a lot of games in this genre is they do tend to feel a little bit samey. There's a relatively low amount of enemy diversity, the characters tend to play very similarly, and the bosses are a bit too simplistic. That's why, more and more, as I play more of these games, I look for the ones that fit a little bit outside of a mold. I do think that Temtem Swarm is very much off to a good start in that regard. But that said, this is just a demo. So it's going to be really interesting to see what changes for the final version of the game. Nonetheless, if you're watching this video before the Steam Next ends, I highly recommend that you check it out for yourself. This is definitely one I'm going to watch, so if you want to see my thoughts on the full game, or at the very least the early access when it comes out, do be sure to get subscribed, ring that notification bell to receive updates as soon as I upload them, and hey, since you made it to the end, maybe leave a like while you're down there. But with that said, I'm curious. How do you like your Bullet Heaven games? Do you prefer them to be straight and simple, a la Vampire Survivors or Magic Survivors, or do you prefer them to be more complex? and involve different and unique interactions, something like Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, for example. Personally, I am very much leaning towards the second, although when I started playing games from a genre, I kind of felt like I was a purist. But over time, and as I played more of these games, the formula ended up feeling just a little bit too repetitive for me. That said, I look forward to hearing some of your thoughts down below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe check out some of my thoughts on other games in the genre. I've played Death Must Die, Potato. Vampire Survivors, and of course Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. I'll link to videos on those up in the card and down below. But that's going to be it for me today. While I was playing Temtem Swarm, I may have hummed a couple of notes of a Pokemon opening. I mean, it is catchy and all, and so now I have to run away from some very angry Nintendo lawyers. So thank you for watching to the end, and I'll catch you next time if the lawyers don't catch me first.